What's going on guys, Austin here, and thank you for tuning in to yet another video. Now today we're going to be talking about something that you might have seen me mention on Twitter. This is going to be the M6E PCI Express SSD. Now this is something that is not going to plug into your SATA connection on your motherboard. This is a PCI Express solid state drive. Now what makes this different from a regular SSD? Well, you might have seen my video editing build, actually the PC that's running right behind me. And in that build, I threw in this baby right here. This is the Samsung 840 series SSD. And this is a really popular SSD that a lot of people go in with many of their builds. And of, of course, it's a regular standard SSD that plugs into the SATA connection on your motherboard. The difference between these two SSDs is that this runs through SATA 3 and this runs right into the PCI Express lane on your motherboard. So the thought process behind this is very simple. This is a hard drive, but it plugs directly into the PCI Express lane on your motherboard. So rather than having to go through a SATA controller like this does, this gets you direct access into your system, therefore increasing the read and write speeds. So there are two key differences, obviously the format and the speeds of these two. Now this is a very standard SSD, a lot of people, this is a very popular Samsung series, and this is going to give you um, read and write speeds of about 540 read and 240 write, and these are in megabytes per second. Well, there's a clear difference between this one and this one. Uh, the Plextor M6E gives you expected read and write speeds. It's going to give you an expected writes or expected read speed of 770 megabytes per second and on the 256 or 256 gigabyte version that I have right here it's supposed to give you expected write speeds of 580 megabytes per second. Of course you can get higher write speeds of up to 625 megabytes if you go up to the 512 gigabyte version but again we're working with two of the same capacity so right out the box this is supposed to give you far per far superior performance than a regular SSD. So before we get into that, we're gonna take a look at what you get inside the box. So taking a closer look at the box, you can see it comes with a very bright red packaging. And we're gonna go ahead and open it up. There's really not much to see here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and read you out some of the specs. Uh, one important thing, it is AHCI compatible. So all of you guys running a, Ma a Hackintosh system, it is gonna be able to work with this. And actually, I was able to test it out. And I'll get to that in a second, but what comes in the package is this VIP pass, and I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's just giving you support information. And actually one great thing about this is that it comes with a five year warranty. That's really good for an SSD because that's about the expected lifetime of, of these devices. Now the second thing that comes in the package is a quick installation guide, which is pretty useless. I'd rather they come with some type of software manual or something, I don't know. But I mean, it's a PCI Express card. You literally just plug it right into the motherboard. So not much goes on with that. Now getting to the actual card itself, we're gonna take it out of this plastic wrap. And as you can see, one, one key feature that I thought that it missed is the color of the PCB. So this is geared towards gamers. This is what they marketed it as, a PCI Express SSD towards the enthusiast gamer. And they gave us a green PCB. If you even search gaming motherboard, chances are you're going to be greeted with a black and red motherboard. This is the standard for gaming motherboards. And it just strikes me kind of odd that they gave us a green PCB. It really stands out in my system. Obviously, I'm not going to be peering into my system all the time. But if aesthetics is something that you really look into, well, this might be a little bit disappointing to you. And one more thing that bothers me, although unless you're running a Hackintosh system that requires you to run it on AHCI, you're gonna get this really annoying boot screen and it kind of takes away from you having an SSD just because it adds an extra second for each SSD you have in your system because it does have that BIOS splash screen that's so annoying. But again, it has really great performance, but it is gonna slow down your boot time a bit if you're gonna be running this on a Hackintosh. Other than that, that is the only negative I could find about this product. Everything else is really great. We're gonna go into the performance really quick, and as you can see, it really does live up to the expected write, read and write speeds. Uh, obviously, it's not gonna give you the exact 770 megabytes per second read and write speeds, but it gets pretty close. So as you can see, we're running the disk speed test, and I'm using this 
benchmark just because I'm mostly working with videos so this is the test that is gonna apply most to me so as I said before the expected read and write speeds are 770 megabytes per second and 580 megabytes per second and as you can see the actual write speeds that we're getting are 680 megabytes per second and a write speed of 550 megabytes per second now compared to the Samsung 840 SSD that I'm running right here you can see that these speeds are actually significantly lower I'm getting a read speeds of about 500 megabytes per second and write speeds of 230 megabytes per second. So as you can see, the even just the write speed is more than doubled using this SSD. Now if we want to kick things up a notch, I did go ahead and grab a second one of these hard drives and here I am running them in RAID 0. Now if you don't know what RAID 0 is, it's basically two hard drives working simultaneously so you can theoretically get double the read speeds and double the write speeds. So in RAID 0 for the read and write speeds, I'm getting about 1300 megabytes per second and 1100 megabytes per second respectively. So that is the performance of the Plextor M6E SSD. And you might be wondering, well yeah, I'm getting really great read and write speeds from this card, but what, what are really the advantages and who should buy this card, if anyone? Well, there are really only a couple things to consider. Uh, one, are you running a Crossfire or SLI setup? Now in my system, I'm running a GTX 760 in a PCI Express lane, along with a Wi-Fi card and two of these Plex Store drives. Now that still gives me space for one more PCI Express lane, I, I believe, but if you're running a SLI or Crossfire setup, this might not be the ideal setup for you, especially if you want to run it in any type of RAID configuration, simply because you're going to lose out on one of the PCI Express lanes. On the other hand, if you want a really good performance, this might be the card for you. Now the last thing to consider is the price. Now, like I said, in my system, I'm running a Samsung SSD on my Windows operating system, and I have two of these in RAID for the Hackintosh setup that I'm running. I'll, I'll give you guys a rundown on that later. But the price difference is about $100 between these two. So if you want the 256 gigabyte Plextor M6E, that's going to run you about $300. And if you want the Samsung SSD, uh, those are around $200. So uh, you have to make that decision whether the increased read and write speeds are worth that $100 difference. For me, I really don't mind because, again, if I'm running these in RAID 0, I'm going to get ridiculous read and write speeds, and I work with a lot of video, and the processing time and rendering time really means a lot to me, so I'm going to benefit from this advantage, but if you don't really think you're going to benefit from this, then you might not want to go with this card. But overall, it is a really impressive PCI Express SSD. So with that price in mind, if you guys are still interested in buying one, I got the hookup for you guys. If you want to go ahead on Newegg.com, I have the link in the description. You can actually purchase one of these cards using the coupon code AUSM6E, that's short for Austin M6E, on Newegg.com. And if you want to purchase one of these cards, you can get up to $30 off on your purchase. Now something that Plex Store is doing, which I think is pretty cool, is they're actually doing a weekly giveaway from now up until the end of the year. So right now, I think it's June 2nd is the day that I plan to upload this video. And so that's about exactly six months. And for every week, they're gonna be, gonna be giving away a one to two SSDs. So even if you don't wanna buy one of these, I highly encourage you to go like their Facebook page and visit their website in the description. It's plexstoreamericas.com. And I have all the links in the description, but you can go ahead and head over there and you can enter yourself every week to win a free SSD. Um, if you don't want to buy one, a free one never hurts. So go ahead and check those links out in the description and uh, go get yourself a free SSD. So that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought of the review in the comments below. And like I said in my last videos, very sorry for the drought of videos over the last three months. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I wasn't really around on the channel. It was just due to college and finals and all this other stress. But I am back now. I'm at home. I have all the time in the world to make videos, so if you don't see me uploading at a rate that you are happy with, go ahead and yell at me on Twitter. I'll leave the link right here. It's at Austin Wachuku. I'm very active on there. Um, if I don't get back to you in the comments built down below, which is quite uncommon, I try to respond to every comment. But if you go ahead and shoot me a mention on Twitter, I'm really fast at responding to those. So go ahead and follow me on there. But uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Stay tuned because I'm going to have a lot more videos. Again, I have a lot of free time now that I didn't in three months ago. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up if you guys like the video. It uh, really helps and lets me know that I'm doing a good job. Subscribe if you haven't already, as always. And thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. That was a lot to say.